Hey everybody, welcome to Analog Stick Radio, episode 21. Guys, we're legal. We can Woo! drink, <gasps> we can oh, smoke, right. we can join the army. We could drive. We want. We can drive. We can do all of the, all of the things we want to do. Uh, Can't run for president my, yet. My, I am your host, Mitch, as always. And over to my left, I am joined by my favorite person in this state, uh, Christopher. How are we doing yeah. today, buddy? Yeah, I'm in the state. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for facts. Thank you for those no facts. And then below me, as always, uh, sitting directly below me, uh, my favorite person in California, Dakota. How we doing, buddy? Hey, not bad. I've been sick, but I'm happy to record the show now. Hell yeah! That's the dedication that we have here on Analog Stick Radio. We are sick, we, but we're, we're dedicated. You guys. Oh, we I've been sick. sick as a dog, man. Yeah, we're we sick are and sick. tired of being sick and tired. So, guys, let's talk games. What did you guys play this week, Dakota? Mm-hmm. What did you play besides the sick game? Shit. What the hell did I play this week? Um, (laughs) Was it all board games? Yeah. Oh, I know what I played. Um, I played The Witness, Jonathan Blow's new game. We bet on it last week. Oh, you you played it? Yeah, I ended up up picking it up. Uh, I got a big um, Amazon gift certificate, bought a bunch of video games. The Witness, yeah, it's good. It's beautiful. Uh, The puzzles are challenging. It's so funny what they do. They take this very simple draw lines on a board puzzle and it's pretty impressive like the creative ways they start to play with that one simple framework um i i i quit eventually because i was like i have no idea what the fuck i'm doing and i need to take a break (laughs) i was just helping a friend play earlier today he's like please look at this puzzle and he like whipped up his stream so i could look at it and i said i have no idea (laughs) you're on your own but it's a lot of fun uh and it's probably gonna take me quite a while Christopher, what did you play this week? I already know what you played this week, and we can save that for later. But tell me something else you played this week. Ah, uh, well, see, I only really played two things this this week. <laughs> I played a game that I'm not able to say because I'm under non-disclosure agreement. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> oh yeah. I forgot about that. You I'm can say s- that you played it, though, right? No, I, I don't think so. No. It's a heavy. You can't heavy even NDA. say that you played you can't it. Can't even say that oh, I played it. Oh my no. god! So you I broke I, the NDA by showing us the game. Yeah, I didn't even show you, Dakota. I just showed you that I was able to launch the game. Right, that's right. Um, yeah. So I played a game that I'm not able to say. So Also, I played a lot of Diablo with so Mitch. you can't say anything. You literally <laughs> can't say anything. Can't say anything what did you do this week? This I can't tell you. Just yeah, nothing. This is top secret this week. <laughs> top secret week. <laughs> Uh, well, I played I played a lot of Diablo with Christopher, like a metric. Yeah, we played a lot of Diablo this like, week. We got so, into the end game zone. Yeah, I I I adhere to this meta bet, and it felt good. Um, but other than that, I played uh, I played a lot of Hearthstone this week, actually. Really? Wow. It was it was nice. Yeah, I I was I, I was in this eternal struggle because I knew the season was ending. And mm. I really wanted to get to 10 because if you get to 10, you get a little extra bonus on your chest. And I was at like 11 with two stars. Give and I'm at this eternal struggle, like <laughs> back and forth. Like, like, oh, bonus man. on their chest. Uh, bonus on my chest. <sighs> but I was, I kept like going up one star and then down two and then up one and then down two. And I just, oh, I just wanted to get to 10 so bad. So I played a lot of it. And spoiler, I finally got there. It was pretty sweet. So, Mitch, did you hear did the news week. about Hearthstone, Hearthstone today? Uh, News? Um, no. They are implementing card rotations. They're gonna have a standard format, and they're gonna have an yes. Awesome. Oh, thank yep. God. Oh. What does what does that mean to us, card players? Okay, not basically card they're goers. going to rotate out the older sets, and only the newer sets are going to be in what what the, I don't know what they'll call it, but in Magic it's called a standard format. So only the most recent sets are played. So when you're building a deck for that format. You're building a deck with only those sets. So let's say if they had a standard format now and it would only have the most recent three sets, it would have Grand Tournament, the Molten Core. Is that what it's called, I think? Right? Something uh, like Black that, yeah. Rock, yeah, Black yeah, Rock but... Mountain. And then uh, Goblins versus Gnomes. It would not have the classic cards in it. That seems really dumb for a game like Hearthstone. Well, it's it makes perfect sense for a game like Hearthstone. Why, why do you think it would be dumb? That's a good question to ask for this somebody not familiar question, with, with cards. Um, Because... Right off the bat, the classic set has the most amount of cards in it, and a lot of cards used all the time are from that basic set. It has a lot of things that aren't in the other one. Secondly, is two of the expansions 
specifically Nax Ramis only gave you 30 cards. Mm -hmm. And, and, and most I'm of those sure aren't like with, with new adventures and expansions, they're going to have a better standard amount of cards they'll have in them. Adventures yeah. will always going to have somewhere around this number and expansions will always have somewhere around this number. But to your first point, the basic and st and uh, classic card sets will always be in standard rotation. Oh, will they? Okay. Yeah. That, yeah, I was wondering about that. I was like, I know they'll probably keep the basic ones like Fireball and Frostbolt. Yeah. Right. I didn't know if they would keep the standard ones, but they probably will. So yeah, all the ones They're... that you get from the game and from classic packs are probably always going to be in standard, but like... Yes. Like goblins versus gnomes will rotate out, right? And then yeah, and then what they're Max doing Ramus is they're going to say out and stuff like that. It's going to be this year and last year are going to be the only legal cards. So they're going to begin this this business this spring, and when they do, Nax Ramus and um, goblins and gnomes will fall out of standard. Wow, and they're that's so huge. It, yeah, it's really good. This this well, allows like, them a lot more freedom to to design cards. They don't have to consider every card when they're balancing every new card. They can only consider those cards that are going to be legal and standard. And it gives them more freedom, and it also allows for a better, more dynamic metagame too. So, what gameplay modes would be for standard? It's like, only it's ranked? only ranked. It's only ranked that matters. It would be like okay. a highly competitive format, which is exactly what standard is. Standard is meant to be like a very highly competitive format because you're supposed to keep up with the metagame. Right. And Arena is still going to be everything. People, this is this is going to answer a lot of the problems that people are having. They were literally saying we're not nerfing Secret Paladin, and that's a big deal because Secret Paladin is crushing the meta right now, and people don't like playing against it. It's actually the reason that we've gone from <clears throat> I don't know if it's the reason, but it's one of the reasons we've gone from like where you just bring three decks to now you actually bring four and they get to ban one. Decks oh like wow! Secret I didn't even know they were reason. doing that. Yeah, now it's you bring four, and then you tell your opponent, okay, I have a Paladin, Warrior, Warlock, and Druid, and they're like, okay, you can't play your Secret Paladin. Get fucked, basically, is what it is now. And honestly, I think this is perfect, because you're going to see different um, <clears throat> different classes rise and fall, and it's great. It's much better for the game in general. I think it's incredible. Yeah. It's done wonders so it's, it's a huge, magic. Huge... Yeah, huge Hearthstone tangent, but I thought it was exciting enough news to mention. No, that's Especially huge. since you mentioned you Hearthstone, so... Yeah, anyway. Much it. So let's actually move on to the main topic. All right. Today, our main topic is something that Dakota and I are very, very fond of um, as musicians. We're going to be talking about music in gaming. Now, we're not just going to be talking about like game soundtracks or like the intro theme. We're going to talk about music in all aspects of it. We're going to be talking about you know, just the background music, maybe the theme, how it changes dynamically. We got a lot of things to cover. So first, let's talk about um, where this all started, right? Let's get into a brief history uh, of how we got to where we are now. Um, now, I don't want to get too elaborate, um, but yeah. basically, yeah, it'll go way I mean, so, I mean, yeah, it's because it's because it's there's there's so much, but the, but the basic gist of it is we start off with like Pong. Pong has little bleeps bloops. That's a pseudo soundtrack. We move over to like. Um, you know, different sound effects being used, but still no music because there's not a lot of space on these uh, initial cartridges. You know, they had like less than megabytes on them. Um, <clears throat> then you have games like Space Invaders and Asteroids come out and they just use like this slow droning pulse that slowly intensifies and accelerates as the game intensifies and accelerates. And that's kind of like a basic soundtrack that's really starting to do what gaming and music is doing and it's influencing your mood. So when those ships are moving closer to you, the, the beat starts moving faster, and I actually was reading a little article. They did a study on Space Invaders uh, where they, they took that out, and they measured heart monitors for people playing it, and then they put it they left it in and measured heart monitors. Really? And the differences yeah, were Yeah, I read that same huge. one. Huge. The differences That's were awesome. Huge. Yeah, so it obviously definitely helps your mood. Even just a slow, like, whoom, 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 whoom. Like, it's, yeah. it was nothing. So then you, then you move on to the era of, like, games like Pac-Man um, and, like, Donkey Kong. Um, you know, not really super elaborate, um, you know, soundtracks there, but getting a lot more gradual. Um, it had them, uh, like, in the intermission, especially, like, yeah, for Pac-Man. Yes, exactly. Pac-Man has the intermission, but even, like, the little pill, like, blah, 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 like that was kind of a pseudo soundtrack <laughs> to the game. Um, the, actually, wait, well, how does the pill go? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I remember now. Are you talking about the Waka Wakas of Pac-Man? Yeah, the Waka 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 Waka. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about Waka Wakas. All right. <laughs> Whatever, man. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah. I like that one. Yeah, sure, the, sure. and then um, and then we move on to actually, Chris. This is a, a f little fun fact. The the Donkey Kong little ditty, like the the initial Donkey Kong, not like Donkey Kong Country. 
uh, was actually written by Miyamoto on like a tiny little keyboard. He wrote it nice. himself. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, and then you go to like, uh, there was a game on the Atari called Tempest, which actually was the first game with an actual soundtrack. Um, but then you have entered the NES, powering out games like Tetris and Mario Brothers, insanely popular soundtracks. Um, you know, the 8-bit system allowing for a lot more storage on the cartridge for sound systems. And also uh, the introduction of like better television technology, having more dynamic speaker systems. So, you know, it kind of helps a lot as well. Then you go into, like, Legend of Zelda, Final Fantasy. Then the Game Boy enters with, you know, a, a four-channel speaker system. Then you enter 62, uh, 30, 16 and 32-bit systems. Sega introduces Mega Man 2. Um, each level has its own music, its own sound design that's symbolized by the boss of the level. That was a huge deal uh, for video game music. Uh, and then we have this split where some consoles kept the cartridges and some consoles started going to CD. You know, you have Sega CD and you have PlayStation uh, and then you have consoles with cartridges. And it just kind of starts to broaden off from there. You get a lot more power from these other systems. You get a lot more storage from the CD-ROMs. Uh, so it just kind of really slowly starts to move in until eventually we get to the era that we are in now where everything has a million storage space and, you know, um, technological musical advancements have gotten us to the point where you can pretty much do whatever you want with music. Exactly. Yeah, we're done it's with like, music now. We don't have to listen to any more sound. Yeah, we don't have to listen to music anymore. We're done. <laughs> we're post music. Yeah. 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 Uh, post, I mean, way back I, in the I, day, I, I ingest my music now. Yeah. So pills. way back in the in in the day, kind of as like a sum, summation, it's always been driven by the technology. First, you had tone generation in in those um, Space Invaders, where you just had the wom wom wom, and that was just converting electrical impulses to sound waves on the chip itself and it's only producing the computer is only producing uh, sound that it can physically and then you move into you know NES era where you're actually doing some synthesis uh, on, on five five channel tracks and then from there you get more more wide with sampling where you can like actually sample a hi-hat and then right. play that back and like Street Fighter 2 has a lot of like hi-hat and fake rototom sounds so that that's getting into sampling and then the MIDI and then do pre-recording stuff and just playing it back and the CD era is what allowed for that because there was so much space on the discs mm -hmm. and as you said now we're where we are now where space is not a constraint at all and we can do whatever we want yeah so let's talk about like how let's first let's move on to how is gaming music different from regular music cuz they're kind of the same Right, but they're kind of different. Sure. Um, so, Chris, you haven't had a lot to say about this yet. We've been kind of taking the floor here. How, like, what are your thoughts on this? How is how is this different? What are, what are the, what are we seeing that? What are some of the aspects of gaming music that kind of make it different from like your regular like Taylor Swift music, which is incredible? <laughs> slip it, see, slip <laughs> it's a little it right loaded in. question there. Um, well, gaming music is kind of made with a purpose, right? Like, of course. Of course, other songs like artists have a purpose to convey a certain emotion or a certain feeling, but I, I think gaming, like you have to have an ambient soundtrack, an ambient thing behind it. You have to have something. I, I don't know. I feel like it's made more with a reason. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. That's exactly what I have for for what I wrote down. Is that they're both trying to invoke feeling. That's the the essence of music is to try to make you feel something. Mm. However, gaming music is trying to make you feel something while it's going along with something else that you're doing, right? Like you're you're playing this game and the music's kind of got to like tie along with it while still making you feel either the same thing that the game is trying to play, make you play or maybe something different in the sense of like a horror game where maybe it's trying to make you feel creeped out because you don't really know what's going to happen. So it's right. kind of got the difficult task of doing both things. Uh, it's a it, score. It's, that's what yes, it is. Exactly. It's not just exactly. it's not just a song. It's a score, and so in it, that way, it's very similar to movie scores or television scores, right, where exactly. you're actually evoking specific feelings that correlate with a narrative, with a story. And at the time, at some some games too, they don't they don't use it, and that's they just kind of make an ambient music, right? That's just in the background, so that you kind of don't have to pay attention to it almost, right? Like I feel like a lot of great game music almost is stuff that you don't know is even there because it just kind of melds into the experience, right? Like, I think one of the, my favorite examples of how, of that ambient music of, like, how it, it plays a purpose here is is maybe um, Animal Crossing, right? Wow. Every every hour, the, so the game has a different song per hour that kind of gets tweaked if it's raining or if it's sunny. 
like it, it's that's why I mean it's kind of it seems more like you know the game has a the purpose of either moving the story along like in a in a boss fight to you know be really pumped to get the the person excited or like really ambient and just kind of like in the background to set the tone not to drive anything not to make you not to make you feel anything just to kind of be part of the game i don't know right I don't yeah know i'm how to describe completely- it uh, I was reading a bunch of different articles on it, and a lot of them said like oftentimes the mark of a superior sound design is that you don't consciously notice it. It's mm. just kind of supposed to tie in. It's not supposed to take over the game, uh, and that's kind of my beef with game with uh, with soundtracks like for like Mario Brothers, for example. Like the game itself has nothing to do with the soundtrack. Soundtrack to that game, like do do do, like that has nothing to do with what you're doing. I guess in a sense, like that first level is kind of like open and fun, and you're running around. But it really has no, like nothing to do with it at all. It's just kind of yeah. something that's there. They they weren't quite at the the point where they were doing clever things. I don't think with the yeah. music way back then. I think we'll, well we'd see that more often now. Well, they did they did do it actually as as one aside. They did do it with um with the star power though. When you got that star, that music changed. It's like that's true. And you just right. run, you're like, oh shit, I feel like I'm unstoppable. I'm gonna run over everything. Yeah. So that's one caveat. Like, but then it goes back to this like stupid like it's not stupid, but this goes back to this theme that you better really watch yourself. That yeah. that's a way that that uh, <laughs> whatever that that. <laughs> That's a way that gaming music is different than regular music, and, and so we'll put that on hold for just a minute. I wanted to say uh, one last thing about how they're the same, how gaming music is the same as regular music. At the end of the day, you still have composers composing music, and you, it's not saying that you're like a video game composer or a video game songwriter isn't diminishing the fact that you're still a songwriter, right? You're still a legitimate magician, or magician, musician. <laughs> Sometimes you are a magician. <laughs> <laughs> a legitimate um, magician. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm always a legitimate magician. There's a uh, there's a website called Classic FM, and it's just an online radio for classic music. And over the last few years, they've acknowledged the legitimacy of uh, video game music, and they allow video game composers to be featured on their site now. And every year, they always do a top, uh, I, I guess, top 100. They rank the top 100 composers for the year. And Nobuo Imatsu, the composer for Final Fantasy VII, has been on the top ten for like the last four or five years or something. Yeah. And I think in 2014, his Final Fantasy uh, body of work was number three for the year for composers over everything. Hmm. Like he was up there with Beethoven, you know, side by side. So wow, that's, in that ins- way, that's insane. Yeah. Like in, so in that way, you can acknowledge the fact that video game music is very much i mean it, it is music it's real legit music um, well actually in that same respect uh i know that for i think for the past like four or five years now video game music has been re- recognized by the the grammys and you can submit uh video game soundtracks to the whatever like the the musical arts whatever really uh, i had no idea yeah nobody's won yet with video game music, but <laughs> right. it's at least there's something to be said that you at least that can they, they at least it. can, a, can yeah. have the uh, ability to accept it, right? right? Like yeah, it's it's that's insane. Like that's huge. Like you can submit video game music to the Grammys. That's yep. that's almost as huge as like when I'm on a boat almost got a Grammy. Like that's <laughs> that, that blew my mind when I was like they're nominated well, for that a was a legit Grammy. song, man. I mean, it was a great song, but it just come on, like you have you know Titans like. You know Billy Joel, and then you have I'm on a boat. You know, it's just Lonely not the same Island. category. Yeah. You know, but so so how are they different? And we were talking about this. They, you know, video game music's got to got to tie along with this video that you're watching. You know, it's yes. got to it's got to kind of more than that. Yeah, more it than is that? more. Than what that. do you mean? I mean, it's not just a video. It's not a movie. It's not a TV show. You have to play it. It can't just be like. It's not just simply what you're seeing on the screen. It's how you're reacting to what you're seeing on That's, the screen I mean, as is, well. That is a good point. Yeah, that is a good point. So it's got to be almost like repetitive and reactive. Exactly. Which is, di- it's, which is difficult. It's got to be, yeah. be dynamic. It, it has to mo- – mm-hmm. movies and, and TV exactly. shows occur in a predetermined order. The scenes in them occur in a predetermined order and they're always the same way every time you play through it. Obviously, it's not the case in video games. As you mentioned, Mitch, you, the, you know, the game – Maker doesn't know exactly when you're going to grab the star, but when you do, the music's going to change to you know reinforce how you are now different with the 
fucking beatbox, yeah. beatbox. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, in that way, dynamic, dynamic um, music is one of the huge ways that video game music is different than other music. And it's also, in my, in my opinion, just as a musician, and Dakota, you can weigh in on this, it's a lot more difficult to write something like that that has to be dynamic in a sense of, of being repetitive but also being you know, able to, to change on reaction. That's, for sure. That's hard to that's hard to do. That's and, and make it flow seem almost almost seemingly at least. That's very Definitely. difficult to do. Um, that's what I that's like something is when, that they have to keep in mind. What I like is some some uh, some franchises have adopted something like I know like the Halo series for example. Um, obviously the the theme for Halo is amazing. I loved that theme. Um, but what they did in the game, which I really really liked, was they would have bouts of just silence. There was no game music. You were a, a product of this. You just had to like be subjected to the environment and your shield and the bullets and the monsters. And then when you hit like this integral point, this like chorusy stuff comes up and maybe like the camera even pans out a little bit and you get this sense of almost like awe when you reach like a certain point. And I thought that was a really interesting way to to, to do this effect. I, I was gonna mention that, but before Halo did that, Half Life did that. Oh, Half Life does do that. The original yes, Half Life does do that. You're right, Bef it does do before that. Before any, like, that was the first instance in my mind when a game had no sound at all. The original Half Life, and you're just going through this like science facility, and then like one point in the game in particular, the first time the sound comes up, it's like when the military comes in and gets involved, and then like this guitar like techno rift comes in, and you're like, oh. Oh shit! There's music, and I noticed the music right away because there was no music the entire time until that happened, and it was like pumping and like guys are shooting back from the whole time. It's been kind of scary, like you know you're getting fighting zombies and head crabs and stuff running after you. But then the the guys who come in who come after to shoot you, then the mu music's pumping, then you're going. That was a great. That's a great like way to use it. Yeah, I I, I definitely really liked that that aspect of it. Just kind of almost st like. Making the whole environment kind of feel still and just kind of waiting for you to do something, waiting for you to get to this point, and then it's gonna kind of pump you up like, fuck yeah, you got to this point. Whoa! You know it's yes, exactly. It's um, Shadow of the Colossus does that really sweet too. Like every time you approach where you I have fight, never played. God. you haven't played that game. I know, uh, I need to play it. Don't. That's, one of my I, that's an all-time classic. Play games, yeah. Neither one of you have played it. I never had the PlayStation Shit. too. I never had the Playstations. <clears throat> you, have, you have to find a way. So when you're approaching an area with a Colossus to fight, it'll play like pretty pretty uh, mellow, like ethereal, atmospheric kind of music. And then as soon as the Colossus appears, like in your view, music will shift. And then it'll be like kind of jamming at like a medium level. And then once you start climbing these huge, huge creatures that you have to kill, as soon as you start like attacking them, usually like when you make the first stab on one of their weak points, and when they notice you, typically, because they won't even notice you crawling on them, they're so big. As soon as you stab them, then boom, then you go and like, you know, music really starts picking up. And it goes in the hyperdrive. It, yeah, hyperdrive. It has a very dynamic uh, quality to it. One of the one of the oldest. It's it's an example of dynamic uh, video game music that you guys know, and I didn't even realize until somebody goes goes go look up this clip. Um, in Super Mario World, when you jump on Yoshi, the music changes slightly. And when you jump off of them, it changes back. If you mm. take the, that, just the basic da 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 that song, that song oh, plays, yeah. and as soon as you jump on Yoshi, you get the yeah, you get the jungle drums in the yeah. background, and only when you're on oh, Yoshi. Yeah. Uh, so that's a really really easy example for a yeah, dynamic. And, and again, as we said before, like with the star, that's also a very good yep. example. Yeah, well. that's that's another one that didn't occur to me until you mentioned. Yeah, because you don't even notice it, and that's I think the point is it's it, that's that's the key in my opinion to to a, a good sound organization. Sound engineering is when you don't really even notice it, it just happens. Mm -hmm. That's great. So let's talk about a lot of what we've been talking about has been just straight instrumental. Let's talk about lyrics. Now, lyrics are not something like vocals really, unless it's like chorusy. Vocals are not really something that you hear in video game music. Uh, when do we think that this is something that's kind of like appropriate for video game music? <laughs> well... Chris, you seem to have a, a hilarious thought here. <laughs> the, only, the only kind of vocal, well, actually two vocals, but the one that popped in my head right away, all I could think of is Sonic 2 Adventure. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Know. And that's an know. example of why you don't do it. It's that like a very... cheesy 80s rock music 
about like Sonic oh. running really fast. It's oh my god! Awful. I forgot. I blocked that out, Chris. I blocked it out. It's like rolling around at the speed of sound. Oh <laughs> it's no! Terrible, oh, and it's so great. So that that's a uh, that that goes in the no column for you. Yeah, that goes I don't in like no column. I don't really like lyric. I don't like <clears throat> game music to me. I'm going to I'm going to say techno because that's what I used to call it. I know it's probably EDM now. I don't know what the proper term people are when using did that happen, for by the way. When did like, the shift from I don't know when that EDM. shift happened. But but um <laughs> so <laughs> I really liked I've always really liked electronic music and <laughs> growing up so I never really liked the electronic or the trance with vocals. That was something I just never yeah, listened to. You never to. did like that, yeah. I don't I really, yeah. That. So, so to me, I, I, especially in my games, it's very distracting to me if I have vocals in my game. The only example is when it's uh, Portal. At the end of Portal, still alive. <laughs> Yeah, I mean but that's you can't, that's, that's not very the, different. That's not <laughs> that's ex- the same. That's not the same at all. But that's wow. the only example of I've, how I've ever liked vocals. Or maybe you know when they do in like uh, in like Warcraft or something, they have like a bunch of people singing chorus in like Elvish or some weird or Latin or some kind of language that I've never heard of before in my some life. Some chanty thing. Yeah, some chanty thing where I don't Latin or like is Skyrim. A language you've never heard of sing- in your life. <laughs> or like Did Skyrim. I- like when they're speaking in um the, the the dragon tongue or whatever, and it's like really, I don't know what they're saying. So to me, it's just kind of part of the the music and the experience, and I'm not like thinking about the lyrics instead. I don't know. I I don't know. That's did either one of you play works. Final Fantasy X? Yes, I, I did, did not. You yes, did. I you, did. You, I figured you you did not. I'm surprised you didn't, Mitch, because it is PlayStation. But uh, anytime you're in a temple in that game, there's this. Uh, theme that plays and it's all vocal chants and that that's a really good one but again it's kind of chanty there's no Ch- yeah, chanting, content. yeah chanting is different, is different from yeah. from sonic adventure bullshit right okay <laughs> like like actual lyrics chris you you touched on it and it's the exact point that i was going to make the lyrics are distracting if you have lyrics in the sound in, in the background music to what you're playing as you're playing it it's distracting you can't really pay attention to the game it's taking you out of that in of that immersion that the game's trying to put you in. You know, in, in the end of Portal and the outro credits, as you're letting the game finish and not doing anything, perfectly fine. In a cutscene, perfectly fine. In the intro, perfectly fine. While I'm playing, unless it's like a really slow part and like we're kind of playing this like part where I'm like traveling around on a ship and I've got some bitch in the back and she's singing me something. Like other than that, like I don't get it oh, out of my did game. Did you guys I'm play like, Red Dead? No, I've Red never Dead played Redemption. Red Dead Redemption, and I've heard good things. It's a very good game, and I'm trying to remember. There's there's a spot where you move from the U.S. to Mexico, and it's like kind of midway through the game. It's very thematically like a, a halfway point, and a song plays. I'm trying to remember if there's lyrics. I do remember it was like this sweet Spanish song, but I can't remember if there were lyrics or not, but I remember it was a really great moment. I just remembered a point in a game where there were lyrics to a song, and it was a very popular song, and it played during an action sequence of a game. <laughs> but it was Fly Me to the Moon during the first level of Bayonetta. <laughs> it, it was just, I love that song. Oh, it, and they did a remix of it, and it's just perfect for what's happening. It's just, uh, that game was so bizarre. That, that didn't distract from it. Like, uh, the game distracted enough. <laughs> the only two examples I could think of was... Um, I guess at the end of Final Fantasy 13, I haven't even finished. A friend told me this. Leona Lewis has a song on that soundtrack, and so she sings in that song or in that game. But that again is like a bookend to the game, where it's kind of like on on its way to the credits. Uh, but it, it's weird. It's just like a poppy radio hit. It it's it doesn't seem to fit to me at least with the rest of the the music in the game. And the other one was in Kingdom Hearts. There was a uh, oh, yeah. a song. By some Japanese uh, pop star that's kind of towards the beginning I think I think it's right after you finish the tutorial and then you go into the game proper you you go through like this dream sequence and it's a weird j-pop song plays it, it for me again yeah I agree with you guys totally pulled me out of the well, moment I was like this actually, is weird now that I'm thinking about it didn't some of the songs in Jet Set Radio have lyrics to them I think that's different because a lot of times those are songs that have that we already know. 
right? Like, I feel like songs specifically. I didn't know any of those fucking Jet Set Radio songs. I just thought they were. They played Rob Zombie. Oh really? I guess they played some. Yeah, one of the songs was Rob Zombie. I remember that specifically Mm -hmm. in Jet Set Radio, and then um, one of the other ones, another game, Tony Hawk. Oh Tony yeah, Hawk we were had, talking about this. Yeah. yeah, like a sports game where you're not really immersed. You're just kind of playing a sport or skateboarding or snowboarding or yeah, like you know, SSX. Tricky, and in that way, it's you know? just your it's just your soundtrack. Uh, it, it's just like the game provides you the music that you rock out to. But now, like people, what they'll do is they'll play games and then they'll put their cans on and listen to shitty EDM, right? Yeah, and it's the, the exact same techno? thing. Te- yeah. Can we bring it back? Can we bring it back to techno? Can we, yeah. can they, we reverse they, the cycle? Uh, that's a different um that's a category of EDM. Oh god. Ugh. <laughs> okay, so actually as we're talking about EDM, let's talk about chip tunes. Like this is a this is a whole genre now of music. This is this is a genre of music that essentially is supposed to sound like it's coming out of your Game Boy. It's just music made with with samples that are of like 32 16 bit even 8 bit like samples and it's weird and i've made some of it for this podcast like it's it's really interesting i don't know thought what are you guys' thoughts on this chris i want to hear your thoughts as as an edm specialist (laughs) if i'm the edm specialist we have a problem man (laughs) um I'm okay with there being <laughs> no EDM specials on the show. I, I yeah. would like to be a part the of that. Last guy, the only person I know in that is Armin Van Buren, and he's like 80 years old now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He should have a podcast called A State of Trip Chip Tunes. <laughs> man. Yeah, I'm sorry, Armin Van Buren. I know you're one of our avid listeners, and um, I didn't mean to offend you in oh, any way. Um, I like the idea of chip tunes. Being coming back diss, now. Are you about to diss my music? I'm gonna change no, the intro music. I, I say, love shut it down. I love old old chip tunes. Like when it was actually on the games that it was supposed to be. I like some of the way that some games do it now. For instance, um I like the melding that recently in Undertale. Undertale had a great mm, chip tune yes. soundtrack that started off very chip y and was kind of like, oh, it's going to be one of these games that's going to try and use chip tunes only. But then it kind of melded into this mysterious, like higher higher qu- res- quality music. I don't know. That's not higher quality. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to describe that. Different, not resolution, but whatever the music version is. Um, and so I like I like that. I don't. Some games try to go back to full chip tune, and I don't think that they do the old ways justice. You know what I mean? Like we we try now to to make bricks with like in in factories, but a way that a mason used to do it with the materials then it it was an art, right? Like back yeah. when they had to make Mario, they didn't have all this space and they didn't have to like kind of put limitations on themselves. They had to create what they had with the limitations they had at the time at the time yeah there's a there's an often uh, repeated phrase in design where you say restrictions breed creativity same is true for music right when you're restricted to those four channels plus your percussion ch- ch- channel you got to get creative in order yeah. to make stuff happen and now when we have all the tools in the world and it's like okay just pretend you only have those five tracks it's it's not it's not quite the same although it's, it's a good it's a good exercise, though, to, to enforce restrictions upon yourself when you're creating things. So maybe that's why people choose to do that. Maybe it, it's a, it like narrows their focus and, and makes them quickly come up with ideas. I don't yeah, know. it was – when when Dakota, when you showed me that site, whatever you showed me, and I started making the music for this podcast, it was, it was weird because I've written like a lot of music and you have a, a, you have a lot m- larger palette – Normally, when you're writing music, especially like with the guitar, there's a lot of things you can do with it. And here, I felt, like you said, I felt so restricted. I was like, this is it? This is all I got? This, I only have these, like, five things? What do I... How the hell am I supposed to make a song out of this? I keep writing something, and it's all sounding the same. And it's it's very difficult. But I like how some chiptune artists have, have taken it and almost made it like a contemporary... Like, they've made it like a contemporary genre. They've taken this old style... Of, of making sound like the the MIDI and the the old s- styles and they've contemporarized it. Um, Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> Ooh, that's <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they've kind of made it sound you know 
more modern. And and, and it sounds really cool because you kind of blend the two uh, times together, like the 80s and, and you know, 2016. Just kind of like blending yeah. them all together. It's, it's yeah, weird. It's, good. it's very common now. You're starting to hear uh, those kinds of sounds in contemporary music all the time. Um, a while back, about a decade ago, um, Such Great Heights by uh, Postal Service, and that album had a lot of beat boppy stuff. Um, and then even as recent as um, a couple of years ago, TikTok by Kesha, that song was fucking humongous. And that had a shitload of uh, chip tune kind of sounds in it. Well, yeah, chip, chip tune sounds have, have been like eking their way into just the EDM culture as it is. Like, I know a lot of techno artists have been sampling them for as long as I can yeah. remember. I've heard them. There yeah. even used and- to be... Uh, a, a genre of rock that died out very thankfully called Nintendo core. I remember I used to listen to a band <laughs> called sky. Eats that's Airplane. such a, that's such a high school music scene. I, that I you understand, but, like... it, but, it, but it, it was a thing like that. A lot of people like that. A lot of different bands did. There was a, a very popular band called sky. Eats airplane. And they actually used a lot of video game samples in their music. And it was just like hardcore music with synth. But instead of the synth, it was like chip tune synth. It was it was yeah. awesome. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. So, yeah, it, it is weird. Well, uh, so uh, music has been these chip tunes have been eking their way into into mainstream music more and more. And similarly, we we've now started to see like musical gameplay start to eke its way into into regular ass games. Like it's not just music in the background. We've got music in the foreground. We've got games yes. that are totally predicated on music, and that, that I think that's awesome. Uh, what are some of your favorites, Mitch? You're talking about games like like, like Bit Trip Runner and stuff like that? Exactly. That's exactly what yes, I'm talking Yes, that about. game is incredible. They actually just released a new one for the Wii U not like about like a couple of years ago uh, that I played extensively. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's a great game. I love any game that kind of like gets you to, to play with the beat, that like has a beat going and then gets you to play that beat. Um, mm-hmm. It's I, Any game like that, I am Chris will tell you, I am a huge fan of. So it's it's you know games like Dance Dance Revolution are, are 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 similar games like that where the the this music actually is the game. Um, sure. I, I love games like that. Chris, what are you? I mean, do you have any favorites here? I know you don't play too many of these types of games. Um, I don't play a lot of rhythm type games. I did play the original Bit Trip. I played uh. There's some hey, game you were, called. You were the person that actually told me about it. Yeah, the, I played this game called like Audio Sir. Oh, I'm Audio a big Surf. dumb s- stupid idiot. My favorite <laughs> game. Go easy on yourself, Chris. <laughs> um, no, he is a big dumb stupid idiot. Come hey, on. Yeah, yeah, big dumb stupid idiot. Um, I, I'm not gonna get into Rock Band, which we could talk about that like almost differently in a certain way. I loved Rock Band for the social aspect, but just for like a rhythm type game, th- th- I think the first one I ever bought it was a Japanese game for my DS that I saw online. Oh it was the only game God. I ever imported. You know what yes! I'm about to say. I had you play yes! that. Yes. It was called Winden. And we A lot of you late, a lot years, of you listeners might know this as a game that's popular on the computer called Oni. No. Or something. Yes. Oh, did they make a new one that's similar? They made like it's literally the exact same fucking game. It's Owen, okay, but for okay, the computer, okay. it's called Oni. Anyways, there was a there, they made same a, exact game. They made a cop a US version of the game called like uh I don't know, Secret Agent something i don't know but the game at the time was so bizarre you played as a group of three dudes one had like an afro <laughs> they were all in like suits so i love good. triple dude games it was they were all in suits and they were supposed to be like a cheer squad right and so anybody who had an issue these people would just bust these guys would just bust into their place of work or their house and cheer them on doing whatever they had like they had elite to beat uh, agents. Uh, elite beat agents fell zero in the chat elite <laughs> beat agents they went <laughs> the original one went and they'd go into their house like a kid had to do his homework or something and he'd just go into his house and they'd play j-pop music and he'd have to like tap the screen and like follow little bars around and like go and it sounds like it the was, most Japanese game. It I've was ever hilarious. The games were it like so poppy and fun and catchy. It was ridiculous. They matched up the the movement perfectly, and they had on screen like little like manga esque like stills with like mm-hmm. a person acting at like certain parts of a story they told you. I didn't know. I don't know any Japanese. I, I never tried to learn it, but like I, all you had to know was the music that came through. It matched the thing, and there were funny like pictures you could tell what was going on in the story oh my it God. was hilarious you yeah, have to look up a video if you can it's, it's great awesome. it's, 
It's been popularized now. It's called Oni. It's for the PC. Uh, people play it with like Never their mouse and stuff like it. that. But, it's, but look um, up Uinden. Yeah. O- Oinden was a much... O-U-E-N-D-A-N for the DS. Oinden was a much better version of that game. It was like Dance Dance Revolution on crack. It was just... <laughs> Like, the, the circles were not... It wasn't just, like, a grid where it's like, okay, one, two, three, four, from left to right. It was literally like, these circles are going to go anywhere. They're going to start anywhere. You may have to hold them and drag them. But it was all perfectly timed with this crazy J-pop music. So, honestly, it was great. So, actually, Chris, you you talked about it. So, let's let's talk about it. Because, Chris, you and I have played th- it's these worth types of games. About. You guys have played these types of games extensively. Rock Band and Guitar Hero and, like, DJ Hero and all these other band, these games, even, like, Dance Dance Revolution and In the Groove and those types of games were, were they're actually their first. These games became insanely popular out of nowhere. Yeah, like DDR the early was always a thing. Yeah, DDR <laughs> was always a thing. Chris, you know I used to go to the arcades and play DDR all the time. Uh, I was a huge fan of DDR. But... Um, Rock Band and Guitar Hero kind of... Guitar Hero specifically came out of nowhere. That game was all of a sudden was just like, oh shit, what is this game here? And it, it became really popular. Why do we think that was a thing? Why yeah, do we think that happened? Dakota, Dakota, what do you think? Um, I don't know. Maybe because there was nothing quite like it out yet. I'm, I'm kind of taking a guess at that. Um, I can't remember exactly if, if what was out around that same time or, or if there were some relics that nobody had heard of way back in the day uh, along the similar genre lines but I do know that when Guitar Hero came out and then subsequently Rock Band came out I was balls deep dude I, I was <laughs> we all I was three were. I was three frets deep man I, I swear to Christ um, <laughs> and I, it's funny I know a guy who's like he thinks of the dumbest things in the world like uh, those games why would you do that instead of just learning how to play a regular instrument oh and to that God. I say why would you ever play a first person shooter just go shoot some some targets just go I shoot guess. a so gun <laughs> yeah right yeah I, Dakota I got the exact same response from everybody my mom and my family members were actually the ones that gave me those questions more than anything you know don't you already know how to play guitar why is why are you playing a game that's teaching you to play guitar it's like that's not what this game's doing at all. This game is right. not teaching me how to play guitar. Uh, right. Chris, Chris, why do you think they got popular? Because I want to hear your opinion I mean, before I give mine. The, originally, I think the, I think the guitars were still like I don't know. The, I don't know music, right? But in my personal view, I've I've seen the guitar kind of fall out of favor, right? Recent years, and I haven't seen a lot of bands, right? It's a lot more rap groups or dance music, and I think at that time it was kind of at the height. All of, of we, a lot of people, we, there were a lot of guitar songs, right, that people still liked, people remembered. So they made a game that everybody was able to relate to, right, old and new. It ma- made everybody popular. And it, everybody thought that playing the guitar is something that's really cool. So if you're able to get up there and play the guitar, as you know, even though you're not really playing it, you're kind of, you're pretending and it's fun, you're having a great time. You're like, oh yeah, I'm pretending to be a rock star. When Rock Band came out, it added that whole social ele- element. Yes. Yes. Now, I wasn't. I wasn't. I liked um, Guitar Hero. I wasn't too good at it, but you know it was fun. I, I played a couple of them. But when Rock Band came out, Mitch was one of the people that was over so, my house. Like we would drums. get we would get playing the band drums. together. Drums, yeah, me too, Mitch. Oh, we'd the get drums. the band together and we'd play for like five hours at a time, just switching off, singing, the, like playing. We'd go downstairs all sweaty, getting some like getting some Mountain Dew. <laughs> And like I go back up there and start jamming out. I, played. I lived in an apartment when I played, and on two different occasions, we've had our downstairs neighbors come up and knock on the door and tell us to be quiet because we've been playing rock bands so loud <laughs> we, and so late. Yeah, we we did the same thing. Uh, his mother would constantly tell us to stop playing because we were banging too hard. <laughs> and when I say we were banging too hard, I mean I was banging too hard. Yeah, yeah he's um, always banging really hard. I yeah. I only bang. Chris at is a full, gentle caress. At, at full hardness. You know. So, um, yeah, no, I think, honestly, and this is going to be me getting a little pretentious for a split second, but I think at the at the, at the the height of, like, 2000, 2001, 2002, music kind of took a spike, and, like, a lot of people were in bands, and that was kind of, like, the thing to do for our generation. Like, banding mm-hmm. was, a, was a real big popular thing at that time. I know because I was part of that, like, culture, and it was just a, it was just the thing to do. That's when at I least in started South getting Florida. Into, Yes, yeah, especially in South Florida, but I know just all over. Like that's was really big time for music, and so I think at this at this height of like music really 
you know, we, we transitioned almost from this like early 90s, late 90s music into like the 2000s music. And that was like a huge, huge spike for music in general. Um, not just like local bands, but like popular bands. There's a lot of like record labels and, and you know, national artists came out of nowhere. So I think the, on, you know, to, to, to piggyback on top of this, um, everyone's going to shows. That becomes like a new thing that a lot of people are doing. Um, rock band and guitar hero were kind of like things that kind of piggybacked on top of that. Like, you know, friends seeing their friends play shows. Oh, this game kind of lets you do the same thing. It was a really cool way to kind of like immerse you into that. So yeah, for me, yeah, for me, <laughs> for, for me, that's, that's kind of where I thought it came from. And, and I, I absolutely loved the game. I thought it was cool because I had actually never gotten to play drums. So a game that let me play drums was really awesome for me as yeah. a guitarist. Mainly that was and, super cool. If you can play the drums in Rock Band, you can play the drums. Like that's a yeah, one you for play one the drums translation. On expert, yeah, if you play the drums as an expert on Rock Band, it was actually the only thing that it actually taught you. I now know how to play drums, not extremely right. well, but I can like keep three different beats at the same time, which exactly. is the which is the core of playing drums. So it's pretty sweet. Yep. So now let's ask this question. We know why they got popular. Why did they fall out of favor really, really like it was almost like an instant thing. Like we had a couple sequels. Like we had like what Guitar Hero Four, and then like some random like Aerosmith and Metallica Guitar Heroes, and then I think well, Rock Band got up to like Rock Band Three, uh, or something. Guitar Hero Three was like the last of the regular series, and then like they had Beatles and and Aerosmith maybe, and only recently like last year they came out with Four. But they, so they tried to revive it, and I don't know if it worked so I, well. Uh, I've heard a lot of people tell me Guitar Hero Four is actually very very yeah. Good. Oh yeah, it was good. Yeah. But, good. I, by listing all of those things you listed, you gave the reason right there why they fell out of favor. Because yeah. they just flooded the market with they everything. Pumped, with like, they pumped yeah, it like yeah. Beatles rock band, Aerosmith rock band, like or Aerosmith guitar hero. Like they just were like, oh, let's ever have every band get over here. And DLC was insane. You're able to have to buy so many songs, and there's only so much you could do. All it is is just getting more songs. Well, I thought that what they did with the rock band market was really cool because yeah. the base games came out with a shitload of music. And then yeah. after that, once they made the, the network or whatever, any any band or whomever could make their tracks or, or elect to, to lend their tracks to rock band and you could get them. They had fucking everything, man. It was like the iTunes for video games for that was, one game. Yeah. It was awesome. Crushed, crushed my wallet. Absolutely crushed my wallet. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, so some- now do we... Do we think that there's going to be a revival? Like you said, Guitar Hero 4, they tried. Do we think rock? I know, I think rock, a new rock band is coming out, if I'm not mistaken. Rock band just came out last year. Two, yeah, one just came out. Did it really? Oh, yeah. well, that kind of answers my question. I didn't even know <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly. It's like, oh, it just came in went, and I mean, I haven't heard too, too much about it, really. Yeah, I don't think I don't I'm, have it. You don't have it. That's a sign right there, right? We were huge. I don't think it's going to be a revival. I don't think it's coming back. I think it was an interesting time. It was amazing. I don't think it's coming back. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think Um, it might in the future, but for right now, I think it's stuck. Well, yeah, when we get laser guitars, there'll be like a laser rock band. Yeah, laser rock band. So we talked about some some cool uh, rhythm games. Dakota, did you have any you want to add in Um, there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think a couple of my favorites that incorporated music. Um, well, you know what? Do, do you guys want to do a top three? Uh, we're just getting into that, and, and I can mention any ones I want to mention there. Oh, you want to just do our like t- our top three rhythm games? Our top three, our top three musical moments, and, they, and if and if they happen to. Oh God. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, so let's do. Uh, we're gonna do it from weakest to peakest. Obviously. Um, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we're going to do worst to first. Uh, so let's start with our number three. Chris, don't, what is don't your... Don't change it up. Weakest to peakest. Your, weakest to peakest. Chris, what's your thir- thirst... Thirstifer? <laughs> My thirst? Third stiffer. Um, this was really hard for me, guys. Because... As it always is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because... We've made our dick joke quota yet. This episode. Uh, we, we, we've had like this episode. Yeah, we've this had like six. Yeah, this we passed. Has been, we passed. We got a surplus. This has been, <laughs> this has been a cock stuffed episode. <laughs> um, I, I, man, I had. It was very difficult for me because I, I don't know. I like a lot of. A lot of my music was kind of from the same era, right? Like the, era, era, the super era. era, era, the Super Nintendo era. 
Um, so it was really hard for me to kind of pick one because they all had like different nostalgia value to me. So I thought back and I, I think my number three is going to be not in that era instead. And I was like trying to think really hard about something else. Metroid Prime on the GameCube. Mm. That that game, like there was no, there's. if you asked me to sing or hum a Metroid song, I would never be able to do that for you. I mean, please, maybe I'd be able to. sing or hum a Metroid song for me, please? I won't be able to do that for you. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I, ca- I, I called my- your bluff and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> it may be able to do it with some of the the Super Nintendo ones, but for for the Metroid game on GameCube, they changed everything. It used to be a a side scrolling game where you kind of uh you know found different upgrades and you had the whole map available to you at the beginning. You just couldn't go to certain places unless you discovered different upgrades, which would unlock different parts of the map so you could keep going, etc. In GameCube, they turned it into a first person view. And it was a first-person shooter that was an adventure shooter. So it wasn't like where you're, like, one-shotting or, like, ducking and covering and shooting. Like, it was much slower paced. Like, you had a lock-on, which is weird because you're, like, a first-person shooter. The whole thing's supposed to be about aiming. But no, it was more like you fought bosses and had to hit weak points and locked on. And it was so sci-fi. The music in that game made it made perfect sense. There was nothing like like driving like there was no like really intense sometimes for boss battles maybe but there was nothing the whole time it had like really soothing like do do like really sci-fi perfect ambient Didn't you music. just tell me you couldn't sing a song and you just sang a song i, I, I made do doos i, I could do doos fucking liar you could do the do doos but yeah right. for me that game had what is in my mind the top game for ambient music Perfect. So I really like that. It's that's great, my number. I mean, it's, it's, and it's just a great game in general. So it was. There yeah. Was also, it was there was also that. Uh, Dakota, your your third place for video game moments in sound uh, my and music. Third place is Pixel Junk Eden. Uh, Pixel Junk Games. They they made a series of games. They made Pixel Junk Shooter, Racer. Eden was one of their first ones. The game just consisted of you playing as like a little flower pollen thing and trying to swing your way upwards and the levels extended higher and higher and higher but it had like the fucking raddest it was techno it was very like one one quarter note mm, 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 kind of techno um but it was good man i don't know why i remember it so vividly the the visuals and the sound together were just a very vivid rich like experience and I believe it did have a lot of that dynamicism where the higher you went in the level, the more the uh, song began to unfold and become more and more and more. And the more pollen you collected too, you collect like these little nodes of pollen, you would get more and more of the uh, the full track. And it stood out. It was very cool. It's by like a that's, French DJ named Bayon, I think, the music. That's crazy. That's really that's cool. Crazy. Uh, my third place, uh, Chris, you played this game. Our friend Jason actually bought us all this game. And I thank him forever for this because it is one of my favorite like moments in like musical gaming. Uh, this little game on Steam called Osmos. Really? G- Dude, that game was incredible. Wow. I don't know. I so really this, like the game, but this, I wouldn't. The, the I never. The way that this game, the way that this game worked is you were this little like organism, and you just spat out parts of yourself to move in a direction to propel yourself. And you would try to eat smaller organisms, and then as you ate smaller organisms, you got bigger and bigger and bigger. Well. They took this theme and they kind of like just sent it in every direction you could think of for that, which was great. But what they had was a, a feature where you could either speed up or slow down time. And this is where I thought it was the best because in the background of all of these levels, they had a different, really slow ambient song. But hmm. if you sped up time, the song sped up. It went in double time. So that you have rad. this song that's going like, wah, yeah. wah, but then if you sped it up, it actually got a little bit higher pitched. And it was like, wah, 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 wah. that's awesome. And it would, just, and it would actually like speed up. Yeah, it would actually speed up with you. And then if you slowed it down, it would half time it would go, whoa, and it would actually really oh, yeah, get that's slow. Rad. And it was so crazy because you're actually playing the game, but and it was one of those instances where you don't really notice it unless you're looking for it. And the only reason it stood out to me because it blew my fucking mind when I actually paid attention and realized what was happening. <laughs> but for the first little bit, I didn't even realize that's what was going on. And so for me, that's that was an, uh, something I had never seen in a game before. Uh, a very interesting feature. Having 
the game music speed up with the time feature that you're speeding up as well. I thought that was very, very interesting for me. And the game itself was incredible. If you've never played Osmos, definitely go check that game out. It's like $4 or something on Steam. It's the best, like, three hours you'll spend, I'm sure. All right. Christopher. Or, no. Uh, two, yep. two Stifer? Two Chris, Stifer? Is that what we do? Oh, that's right. Chris Tufer. Chris Tufer. Chris that's Tufer. what it was. Chris Tufer. Chris Tufer. Right, what, what, was your, um, what was your second one? <laughs> like, guys, this is really hard. Like, I have this list in front of me of a bunch of different titles, and I keep going through my head. I'm like, okay, which one's two? Which one's two? Which one's two? Oh, um, you got to pick. <sighs> For I'm gonna I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick <laughs> st- riveting <laughs> super if he meat says boy. Splatoon, I'm gonna fucking yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, gonna say super meat boy. Super right. meat boy, oh, man. Oh, good. So I'm gonna piggyback good. on you. Super meat boy has my some of my favorite music because it's kind of a new take on chip tunes like it mm-hmm. it gave the the feeling of chip tune music but faster and more more updated that's why i really like it didn't it, it, there were chip tune levels too there was like an 8 bit meat boy special world or whatever and the music there changed to 8 bit music I, I loved the music of super meat boy it was so fast it felt perfect for the game it was incredible definitely Definitely up there, number yeah, two. Super Meepo. And and actually, they actually had Bit Trip Runner as one of the special characters in that game yep. too. Yeah, yeah, awesome. they did. And they had like a Bit Trip level, which ah, incredible. Yeah. Uh, Dakota, you said you were gonna piggyback on it. Was that your second game or first game as well? Uh, it was my uh, my second game, and it wasn't actually the same game, but the same uh, composer. Uh, my second game is Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Oh, I've been meaning to, you keep telling me about that. I keep telling you about this. So both of these games, the music is done by a guy named uh, Danny Baranowski, and uh, he's really good. His his music's excellent. Meat Boy music's excellent. Crypt of the Necro Dancer music's really good, but I like it because the game is one of those games that incorporates music into the gameplay, and it's kind of like uh, roguelikes are really popular. Dungeon divers, roguelikes, they kind of be all the rage right now. And Crypt of the Necrodancer is a roguelike. You go down into a dungeon, try to make your way as far as you can, kill enemies, pick up spells, and stuff like that. But it's all to a heavy quarter note beat. And every enemy in the dungeon moves to the beat, but they all move in in very specific ways. So, like, the first blobs that you find, they just will move, like, um, they won't move. And then, like, the second blobs you find will move one every half note. And then there'll be some enemies that will move... Uh, every other quarter note. So they'll move and then rest and then move and then rest. And so every enemy in the game has a very specific musical pattern that it moves That's around really to. really interesting. Yeah. So your mastery That's a of the game. That's game right there. I need to get to What is this called? Dude, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. <laughs> I'm going to go. Get it right meow. Right <laughs> uh, so so like your mastery of the game is completely dancer. reliant on your ability to uh, recognize the musical patterns of the enemies. It's, it's so genius. It's so made good. by the... It's got the same composer of Meat Boy, so oh, I'm definitely. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Oh, this yeah. is incredible. This is. He's this watching is Mitch videos. All <laughs> this has got him. This has got Mitch written all over it. That, uh, that sounds awesome. That sounds yeah. real, real so awesome. So, what, what's your uh, number two, Mitch? Okay, my number two. You already touched upon it. This is a game that I played a lot of. I've actually played this game three times. I've and I've <laughs> and I've only beaten it once. And it was the intro theme, and what I liked about this, though, was it was the intro theme to the to the game, but they also took it and they actually spread it throughout the game as well in different ways. So my my second favorite like music from any game is the two Xanarkin theme from Final Fantasy X. Ooh. It is honestly an, a beautiful piano beautiful. composition. Absolutely that. piano. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. It was actually the whole the soundtrack first, is gorgeous. It was actually the first song I ever learned on piano. I actually was it was the song that made me want to play piano and I knew that it was a lot harder for me than any other yeah. song that I, I should yeah. probably start learning the basics, but right. I remember there was a there was a large portion of time Chris right before I moved in with Louisa that I just sat there with my keyboard and I played this over and over again until I could <laughs> play it. I guarantee you I spent like hundreds of hours learning this song just to, just to make sure that I had it memorized and could play it. Um, it's What I like about this, though, is they, they play it at the very beginning. You start the game up, they play this theme. And then they continue to trickle it in throughout the game in different ways. Sometimes it's like a stringed one. Actually, one of the temples, they sing it 
in mm-hmm. the chorus, yep. uh, in that choiry feel. Sometimes it's got like a stringed feel depending on what area you're in, but it's always that same theme. It's got this like motif throughout, and it's so fucking beautiful. And then they have like these like pinnacle moments where like you learn this interesting thing and it's playing, but in this like really intense way and. I just thought that game was really well done. As far as music is concerned, a lot of people have beef with how annoying Titus was. But as far as music is concerned, <laughs> right. that game was amazing. And whoever composed that, I used to know the composer because I... It's, it's Nobuo Ometsu. It's, a, it's a Metsu. That's what, I didn't want to yeah. say it and not know. Okay, yeah, Nobuo Metsu. Holy shit, dude. That guy is yeah. so good. At if music. you go Google like uh, p- piano, uh, Final Fantasy piano collections, all of them are awesome. And like, so I listen to seven and ten most of all, but they're, they're uh, discs of just piano renditions of all the songs. So, so gorgeous. Oh, they're all fucking gorgeous. All right. It's that time, Chris. First of all, give me your number one. Well. <sighs> I thought that was a drum roll. Whoever dropped it, <laughs> I, I dropped. I dropped this little drum roll. Poker <laughs> <Okay>, chip. <laughs> um, <laughs> I uh, fell zero and Chad said, um, "Ocarina of Time," and that's I. I wanted it to be on here. I just can't. Uh, I. I I, I when we said the top three, we said top three best gaming moments, right? Not, or musical stuff. So I'm going to pick all of Super Nintendo. <laughs> okay. Can I do that? Is that the, the most cop out of an answer I've ever heard? Oh my god, no. So I'm going to make you, yes, you pick it is. one. You pick one. On my list here for like the most notable ones I have for my Super Nintendo, I have Super Mario Brothers, the, the launch title for Super Nintendo. I have Castlevania 4. I have Mega Man X. And I have Donkey oh, Kong Country Mega 2. Man X. Oh. oh, those are good, man. Those are like, a lot of good choices. <laughs> I know, and I Chris, and there's Mega like Mega Man X and Chrono Donkey Kong Trigger Country on there. are my are like my honorable mentions. Chrono man. Trigger, one of Chrono our Cross listeners. Chrono Trigger. Trigger's on there. Like, I got a whole bunch, but those are like my top four, like my nostalgia. Even like Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. Oh, like, Chris! Oh my god! Like, <laughs> like, there's so many perfect games. I, like those four particular, like Donkey Kong Country Two specifically, because of how they t- changed the whole idea of the Donkey Kong songs, which were awesome, and made them piratey. Yes, like, they did. They had the whole pirate version. Castlevania Four. It had music that really, like, was way upbeat and really was like mysterious. And every kind of era, like they had a like a Frankenstein song that I don't know. That whole era had the most amazing video game music for me because I felt like they were in a time where they had just given a lot of these creative people who were working in the NES space a little bit more wiggle room, and they just went to town on it, right? Like they had some brilliant minds in there. I don't know those this Super Nintendo era. That's one hundred percent my I favorite can, yeah, era can, of know, music. I, Chris being Mr. Nintendo here on the podcast, <laughs> I, I'm I'm comfortable giving this to him here. Dakota? Okay, fine. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Nintendo can, can take it. Thank you. Right, Super Dakota, Nintendo is my favorite your, game music. <laughs> what was your... Yeah, I went into his... I came over his house the other day, and he just had Mega Man 2 music blasting, and I was like, this right it's here is why we're It's great to play StarCraft friends. to Mega Man 2 I was like, this is why we're Mega friends, music. Christopher. This so, right here is one of the... Something I wanted I to talk that. about was like just pop culture moments um created by gaming music and since you mentioned it real quick have you heard of the uh the okuzan man song that's based on the uh, mega man uh theme song i haven't it's like this sounds familiar but i don't i don't remember hearing it it's like like this weird japanese rock song that this guy made to the tune of Mm -hmm. one of the mega man songs uh i'll look up a video for you if you guys are listening just look up okuzan man o-k-k-u-s-e-n-m-a-n okuzan man uh, you'll find it. I'll show you guys after the show. I want to. I want to. I want to. It's wanna. Jappy. It's very I Japanese-y. Wanna. You can't say Jappy, can you? you Got to say Japanese. You <laughs> You're not allowed to say <laughs> Jappy. Allowed to say yeah, Jappy. let's. Look. Oh my god. We're, not we're gonna have to bleep that. that out. We're gonna have to bleep something. This is the first <laughs> time. We're gonna have to. Fucking we have a mature filter out. over here in Twitch, and oh we're gonna have to bleep god. something out. Yeah. We have a mature so, filter. I say fuck like 50 times an episode, and, and we have to bleep something. Jeez. We had a cock-heavy episode, and we're going to have yeah. to bleep something this out. This is a heavily <laughs> cock-handed episode, and we have to bleep something out. Thanks, Dakota. Mitch, 
Oh, so wait, speaking, no, no, of, uh, two. Number yeah, one. speaking of Japanese, um, my number one is a game called Patapon. It was for the PSP. Uh, there were two or three of them, definitely two, maybe three. These games were rad. They were like a, um, a god game. You played as a god. You had to commune with your followers through music in order to get them to march into battle. Oh, that's and so awesome. It was very cool. It was very cool. It was, the general premise of the, the gameplay was just basically repeat after me with patterns, and you just had to like X, X, square, triangle, like different configurations of the four buttons. But every time you missed, your, your guys would f- fuck up their march and stop moving. But then you also had to like issue commands through music. So you had to issue the move forward command through music or the move back or the retreat or like the throw spears command. And it was all to music. And I, again, as you continued to hit the beats, the music got more intense. Your dudes start like doing backflips and jumping. It was, it's some oh, like the coolest, man. most charming musical video game I've ever seen. Chris, do you have a PSP? Can I get this game and play it on your PSP? I don't have That was a, a dumb question. I knew you didn't have a PSP. <laughs> I don't know why I asked that question. All right. That's another one you'll have to go look up videos of. <clears throat> yeah. My number one, Dakota, I think I already told you this. I, I think I spoiled this one for you. Uh, this is just something that I'm never gonna forget. I put it; it just comes on shuffle because I have it saved on a bunch of different playlists. And it was honestly some one game that I loved listening to the music the most, and I can remember vivid memories of me plugging my headphones into the bottom of my fucking Game Boy Color, the purple translucent one, on the mm-hmm. bus, listening just so I could fucking listen to the soundtrack of this game, the Pokemon Red and Blue, oh. specifically the battle theme. The dun, 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 dun. Like that whole, that whole thing was just the best thing I've ever heard. Like it's just great. It's it's really really intricate and really really intense. And but it still has that chip tune feel to it. And it was the first time I'd ever heard like, it, it was almost like metal chip tune in a sense. Like it felt like metal metal chip tune because like all of the it wasn't just like slow. It wasn't like do 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 do. It was really 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 fast. And it just really got my heart pumping. I remember when I was battling, I was just like, this is fucking awesome. Like, and it was using like a lot of different tones and a lot of different sounds. And a lot, and it had that ah, uh, just just great music, man. All of it. And Nothing I loved how like when nice. you change zones, like you got a completely different music for the feel of the zone. Ah, uh, it's just fucking fantastic music. That's So that's my number one. It's good that's nostalgia pick. We like to uh, want to battle little animals against each other like some good chip tunes. Yeah, yep. man. Who doesn't want to battle animals to chip tunes? All right, guys. I have a lot of things to say about the meta bet. I went hard in the paint, so let's <laughs> talk about the goddamn yeah. meta bet. All right, Dakota, take us, take us away. All right, take you back to last week where I won and Mitch lost. He had to uh, <sighs> suffer For a the first time in a while. First time in a while, yeah. He yeah, suffered a it. nearsighted Diablo three wizard, so he had to play zoomed <laughs> in completely. <laughs> Do the whole whole game. Uh, so, how'd it go? Before he, before he continues, I'd like to say that we we were starting to just get into Diablo, and it, we this is the week that we like hit our stride, right? Like you know, you get in the game where you're like, okay, now I understand. Like I'm really into this game. This is the week we hit our stride. So we were playing a lot on the weekend. Oh my god, I played so much, and for you guys that know Diablo. I play a wizard, and if you know anything about Diablo and Diablo 3 and the wizard class, your best spell is this spell called Disintegrate. And Disintegrate is a single line beam that you channel straight forward, and then you can like spin around as you're channeling it to change the direction. <laughs> well, if you zoom in, it's at this really awkward angle, and it's really fucking hard to aim that beam. And also, you're, it's supposed to be meant for you to, like, hit enemies from way over there. You're supposed to... You're, you're a wizard. You have cloth you're armor. You're a wizard, Harry. Yeah, you're a wizard, Harry. You have cloth armor, so you can't take a lot of hits there. And also, when I play wizard, I play with a move called teleport, which is basically your all-purpose blink. Oh, so that's well, worthless. But zoomed in, right? It just blinks I, into, it, like, a mob of, like, yellow. I, there like, were so many situations where I'm, like, going through this <laughs> level. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to blink over here. Womp. Oh, there's 50 guys right here. Uh, Chris, I'm dead. Chris, I just I just died. I just blinked into a bunch of guys because I didn't see what was over there. There was – I actually had to – I was talking to Chris. I had to change my skill set because normally I was using, like, this magic missile move that you just shoot yeah. forward and it does some stuff. 
I mean, it, it's useless at, at close combat. I literally had to be a close combat mage. So right. I had to use this move that was only good if you were close combat called Spectral Blades, which basically right in front of you just dazzles out some spectral, like, <laughs> blades. Amazing. And and it was, like, terrible, but it was, the only, it was just, like, the best thing I could use because I would literally, like, walk up right in front of the guy next to Chris, the melee monk, and just be blasting him in the face with this laser beam. It was Excellent. the it was Excellent. The worst. It was the worst. But I but well, that sounds I like it, I made it through. Good. I made it through. Good. I'm like what, we're sounds like, like 70, a meta bed success story. Yeah. Yeah. I'm we were like we're like Paragon seventy now. Like we went real deep. I played a shitload of Diablo. And nice. I was zoomed in. The I will say this. I did zoom out to make sure that I wasn't um, missing any loot because it was really hard to see if you miss any. Loot. Yeah, I let him zoom oh, out. God. <laughs> yeah, I would zoom out to just make sure that I didn't miss any loot on the ground from like a mob that was over there that I fought. But that's it. Like I would zoom out, collect loot, and then zoom back Guys in. Guys that he didn't see, right he was on. killing by accident. Yeah, we'll we'll out. Only, we'll out. Yeah, that's the only thing I did. But other than that, and I told Chris the whole time I was like, I don't even know what this game's gonna be like when I zoom out. Like it's gonna be a whole new game. It's gonna be a whole new world. It's gonna be a magic, magic carpet place ride, that I've never knew. It's yep. gonna be great. So, exactly. all right, I'm excited because I'm gonna punish some motherfuckers tonight. Yeah. To recap, last week we bet on Gravity Rush Remastered for the PlayStation Four. Uh, uh, last week, our bets. Remember. I was up top with 83. <laughs> what did he say? That's he just, said, I just, I just remembered. remembered. <laughs> yeah, the bets did not go well for him. Uh, I was up top with 83. Mitch was in the money position with 81, and Chris was way down low with 74. Come we'll see on, if it be a paid off for him. Uh, today, the day of release, based on 37 critic reviews, Gravity Rush Remastered has a Metacritic score 60. of 80, making Shit. Mitch the winner and Christopher the loser once more. Chris, hey, what are you Chris. playing? Hey Chris, what you playing, bud? Uh, what are you playing, buddy? Well, I'm playing Diablo. Oh, let's hit Diablo, Chris. <laughs> let's hit Diablo. Damn. Mm, you can think I'm of another to, good one. We had a lesson. I'm trying to think, think of, of the, a good uh, one for Diablo. I'm also playing that last. game that we can't talk about. Oh yeah, you oh, are playing. Yeah, that no, game no, we can't talk about it. Can't talk about it. I was just saying. <laughs> we're gonna play. We're gonna play. We're gonna, we're gonna play, play the. Talk okay, about how about you redacted? You about. Yeah. Redacted. <laughs> redacted. Exactly. We have to bleep out a lot in this episode, apparently. Um, I know you're playing Diablo. I know you're playing StarCraft. I, I really want to hit you. I really want to hit you in Diablo. I want you to feel what I felt, Chris. I really, really do. You can always give him a challenge again, like you did two weeks ago. Mm. Where if he doesn't meet it, he's got to give you the. All right, Chris. Heart, 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 I got it. No, I got it. Chris, you need to hit Rift level 25 by next week. That's easy because I've already beaten 21. Oh, shit. I meant Rift level 30 then. <laughs> okay. I don't know that's how it. hard that you're is. Gonna have, you're going to have to play. I mean, it gets, it gets difficult. It gets real difficult. I think that's going to be too easy, bro. You, you want me to up this, bro? All right. Up that's the it. You can let me up it. Rift level 40. Go fuck yourself. Okay, I All don't right. know if I can do that, but I'll do it. All right. Yeah, no, Rift, well, Rift that level sounds 40. like a Shit. challenge. Yeah, you got to get to Rift level 40. That's what I All want right. from you. And and in solo as well. No people. Damn it. I don't think that's very high, according to one of our listeners. <laughs> he says okay. that's adorable. Level well, 40. I have a lot of time. I have a lot of stuff to do this week. I'm also I'm in graduate school. I have a lot of papers to do. So Is I don't that know SAS? Do you want me to make it 50? No, no, I'm saying, like, I don't know. It probably is hard for me. Like, I won't be able to play a lot. The right, highest how about this? people okay, are getting about, up to, like, about, Rift level 90. How about so this? this how, many, how many legendaries or greens are you wearing right now? A bunch. Do you have all legendaries all and greens? Yeah. You have them all? Damn it. Yeah, I'm just going to go with Rift level, man. I, that helps me, honestly. That really helps me, because the higher you get, the better we do. So. You can make them not able to wear the good the goodies. Yeah, well, no, that, that, then you can't do it. You literally just can't play anything. Yeah, you literally like, can't. Like, you literally yeah. can't The set do pieces anything. give you the things that let you do the shit damage. All right, yeah, that's true, yeah. that's true. Okay, you okay. Literally, like, if you we... just, you... Wait, do you have your set piece bonus, Chris? A couple. Like, like I, do I don't have... An, I, I have different set pieces. Okay, like I just sets. got it. You need to finish your set and then do your set dungeon. That's your challenge. Because that's you, so you heard me trying to do mine. Mine was fucking hard as shit. 
Yeah, that's like okay. the, the challenge you built into the game. That makes sense. Yeah, you have to finish your I set, which I know is easy because I finished week. mine, and you have to do your set dungeon. At least one or two of the achievements because there's okay. like six of them. That's okay. your challenge. I think I, I like just it. unlocked the free set that will let me do that. So, okay. okay, I think I'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. All right, that's, so that's yeah, he has free. to do it already, so it's, it's, it's a win-win. You have to do it already. Yeah. So, all right, all new right. meta bet. Let's go. New meta bet for this week. Uh, we are betting on a game that comes out a week from today called Firewatch for the PlayStation 4. Oh, we are, yeah. A couple of us are looking forward to this game quite a bit. It's a uh, first-person kind of adventure game. Uh, oh, my game. God, this game. Yeah. Holy shit, this, this game, game looks comes awesome. out next week? Next week. Next I don't week. even care about the meta bet. I'm just going to buy this game next week. Yeah, I'm still. It's the win-win. I, I was surprised too. I looked up. I'm like, okay, what comes out next? Ooh, Firewatch. All right. Oh my yeah, god. What, am I, what do I think the meta bet is going to be on this? Oh, this is shit. Okay. This is one of the, for me at least, one of my highest, most anticipated games of the year. This is really? one of my top. This is one of my top five anticipated games of the year. For I sure. didn't look too much into it. So. Well, Chris, you don't like PS4, so you don't count. You I don't just, not Nintendo. like it. I just he doesn't don't. have one, so there's no you reason to look one. into it. Yeah, you don't count. Shit, okay. Uh, I got my number. Fuck. Okay, I got my number. It's in. No, wait. Okay, now it's in. Okay, now it's in. All right. Oh, oh, I my gotta... Num- I go, hold on, I gotta put it in. Okay. You all ready? ready? I'm ready. All right, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, we- shit! <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! So, we all knew better. Money, we went a little money, high money. Uh, so going from the top, I'm at the top with 89. Chris is in the middle for the first time in years Boom. with 87. And Mitch is down low with 86. Wow, that's crazy. Wait, I mean, yeah. I like, again, this is what I was saying last week. I like that we're all in the same area, though. Like, we've kind of all honed in to being, except Most for last time, week, yeah. where, except for last week where Chris just kind of flailed about like a magic carp. But other than that... <laughs> um, you know. All right, so we'll have to see. I'm, I'm actually excited. Uh, I think we should honestly even go one step further here. And Dakota, if you or myself lose, I think the other person should make a Firewatch meta bet challenge for that person because we're both going to be getting it. Okay, we'll have to see like what the game is and how we could think. Of, but yeah, we'll try. We'll do our best. We'll, we'll have to. Yeah, we'll try it. We'll try it. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, as always, Analog Stick Radio is brought to you by Bit Cultures. Bit Cultures is a site that features video game reviews, opinion pieces, digital media. You know, just like this very show. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, definitely go check it out because we have a lot of great content. And the site is www.bitcultures.com. If you want to reach us, rad guys, that's Analog Stick Rad Guys. You can email us at analogstickradio at gmail.com or tweet us at ASR Podcast. I know these are very difficult to remember, but do your best. Uh, we record every Tuesday night here at twitch.tv slash radio, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, and it's published to iTunes and all your other favorite podcast trackers on the following Thursday at around like noon. So if you want to subscribe to us, definitely do so because that helps us, and you helping us helps you. you know, so you just help me help you. Uh, guys, any parting words? Um, None for me. Uh... Oh, Herman Rorschach, the creator of the Inkblot test. His friends called him Inkblot when he was a kid. <laughs> <clears throat> and on that nonsensical non sequitur. Makes sense. A lot of sense. Once again, I'm Mitch. For myself, Chris, and Dakota, this has been Analogic Radio, episode 21, the barely legal episode. Thanks for tuning in. No, 100% legal. We'll see you. See you. Bye-bye.